Now, the mass unrest in Ukraine seems to have made the country a popular destination for U.S. diplomats, with the latest State Department official now in Kiev. Victoria Nuland plans to meet with both the leadership and the opposition to offer Washington support in putting together a new government. As Marina Portnaya now reports, this follows a long tradition of U.S. involvement in the politics of other nations. In less than two months, U.S. Assistant Secretary of State Victoria Nuland is making her second visit to Ukraine, where anti-government protesters have received the full support and backing of Washington. Now, U.S. officials say this trip is aimed towards aiding the country in forming a new government and helping Ukrainians fulfill their democratic aspirations. Now, back in December, it was the stomachs of protesters that Ms. Newland helped fill as she walked around Kyiv's Independence Square handing out snacks. Now, for many, this scene put an entirely new twist on international meddling. You see, in recent years, the U.S. has cemented its reputation in siding with anti-government opposition movements, taking place in sovereign countries such as Tunisia, Egypt, Libya, and Syria. But in the case of Ukraine, U.S. officials are actually flying over the Atlantic to visit and possibly strategize with pro-European Union protesters, a power play that critics say Washington would condemn if the roles were reversed. If uh, China or Russia or any other great power uh, or even a regional power like Iran uh, came to the U.S. and, and um, was encouraging the protesters, uh, there would be a hue and cry from the American media uh, like you'd never hear it before. They would say, why are these people interfering in our internal affairs? But of course, the United States uh, sort of has a double standard because it often interferes in the affairs of other countries and thinks uh, nothing about it. In all fairness, critics say the U.S. does sometimes show restraint when it comes to foreign conflicts. For example, in Bahrain, as brutal and deadly crackdowns against peaceful unarmed protesters have taken place, the U.S. has minded its own business. America has also respected its right to remain silent as Saudi Arabia recently enacted a new law allowing the kingdom to prosecute and jail anyone who exposes corruption or demands reform. Reporting from New York, Marina Portnaya, RT. Well, here's one regular guest at protests around the world, John McCain. The U.S. senator has uh, been known to the Ukrainian public since his first appearance at the so-called Orange Revolution a decade ago. And his interest in the post-Soviet space didn't end there. Getting a welcoming hug from the president of Georgia, Mikhail Saakashvili, during its war with Russia and... Here he is at the heart of the Arab Spring in Cairo, also lending a helping hand to the Libya uprising and most recently visiting a Syrian refugee camp in Turkey. Well, we can now bring in uh, Sergei Trifkovich, who is a writer in international affairs and a foreign affairs uh, editor for the magazine Chronicles. Thank you so much, Mr. Trifkovich, for joining us here on IT International to discuss the situation in Ukraine and around it. Well, as we know, Victoria Nuland plans to meet both uh, the government and Ukrainian opposition. So what's her agenda, do you think, uh, during her visit in Ukraine? Quite clearly, her agenda is regime change. Because the claim that she's coming to Ukraine to aid uh, the Ukrainians in overcoming the, price, uh, the crisis is reminiscent of the term fraternal assistance to the socialist bloc that was the essence of the Brezhnev doctrine back in the 1960s, specifically in 1968 with the occupation of Czechoslovakia. But at least with Leonid Ilyich Brezhnev, uh, the border of the socialist bloc marked the end of the doctrine itself, the doctrine of limited sovereignty. With the United States so-called benevolent global hegemony, there is no border. Every nook and cranny of the world, every spot of the world is a legitimate target for the Newlands of this world to come and intervene. She came in December to distribute cookies to the demonstrators. And can we imagine, as your previous interviewer said, a Russian foreign ministry official coming to the United States or any other place in the world to do likewise. So what I'm surprised about is that the Ukrainian government, having made all sorts of concessions to the demonstrators and the opposition, is allowing this sort of thing to happen. Well, Victoria you know, Newland um, is up to no good. And 
I also want to ask you here, while you were describing the situation there, I mean, um, what we see happening here is that Europe and the U.S. are accusing Russia of meddling in the Ukrainians' affairs. Uh, but how do you see the situation there? I mean, is there anything to that claim? Well, first of all, let us face it. Everybody is interfering in everybody else's affairs in one way or another, because any political move, whether it is the EU offer of association deal, which contained no money, by the way, or the Russian offer of a 15 billion rescue package, it's some form of pressure because it influences decision making. But let's face it, we didn't see Sergei Lavrov go to Ukraine uh, to Donetsk or to the Crimean oblast to interfere and, and to encourage pro-government protesters. And in any event, Russia's role all along seems to have been to indicate clearly what are the boundaries of Russia's own interest in, in the affair, which is to let the Ukrainians decide, but also to be clear that if the association agreement with the EU is signed, there can no longer be free market or rather customs free access to the Russian market, which is uh, only fair enough. If it is called pressure to offer a 15 billion rescue package to a near bankrupt country, I think there are many countries in the world that would just love to be exposed to that kind of pressure. All right, Sergei Trifkovic, Foreign Affairs Editor for Chronicles Magazine. Thank you so much for your views on RT International.